Hey everybody, I'm Charlie Craven, <clears throat> excuse me, and today I'm going to tie for you an old pattern that John Byer and I came up with about 20 years ago called a BC Hopper. Uh, and this was a fly that uh, uh, was was developed to use as the dry in John Byer's Hopper Copper Dropper Rig. Uh, and I had the Charlie Boy Hopper at that time, and John liked the body on that, but he wanted something a little bigger and burlier and, and uh, uh, you know, dare I say, more complicated. Um, to, to support you know some heavy uh, heavy beaded copper johns and tungsten beaded flies like that, um, so we uh, uh, sort of sat down and, and worked out a few different ideas and, and to be honest with you I'd go home and tie it and I'd bring it back and show it to John and uh, he'd give me his his input there and then I'd I'd tweak that and um, you know it's honestly kind of fun to look back on on developing this fly and I remember the legs were um, you know a big problem for me I could not figure out where to put those legs and how to how to get them in in the right spots and. Uh, I remember laying in bed one night about to go to sleep and I had a big epiphany about where to uh, install them and I uh, got up immediately and put them together and, and it worked. So um, just kind of one of those those cool uh, things to look back on. But um, this is still a, a very viable fly, a great uh, great dry dropper fly. Um, and so sort of a fun, uh, if not a little complicated tie, but it's, that's kind of a nice challenge. Um, so for those of you that are not afraid of that kind of thing, here we are. Uh, so what I've got in the vise is a TMCO 5262. This is a size 6. Um, and I've got a, uh, you can tie this in 6s, 8s, and 10s. Um, I've got a piece of, of 3 millimeter foam. So it's 3 millimeters thick. Um, and it's cut about as wide as the gap of the hook. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hook out of the vise. And then poke the hook through the foam. About an inch or so from the end of the foam. And then I'll put it back in my vise like so. And I've got the long end facing you guys and the short end is is my way just so it's out of my way. And then what I'll do is I'm going to start some 3 aught monochord. This is just tan 3 aught monochord. Um, and I, I do like monochord for this. You can use 6 aught uni, um, but I would not use 140 denier UTC. Um, the UTC thread is very flat and spreads out and it just makes the segments too big. So 3 aught monochord is really what you want to go with here. Um, so I'm going to start this thread about 20 to 25 percent of the way back from the hook eye and I'm going to make a thread base all the way back to the hook bend and I don't really mind if my thread twists here as I go uh, because I'm going to run back and forth really what I'm doing here is trying to add some texture uh, so that corrugated corrugated effect of the of the twisted thread is actually a good thing here and I want to run all the way back make sure I'm all the way back even with where the thread would hang even with the, the barb of the hook, an idea there. Um, and I'll leave my thread hanging there. Um, now what I'm gonna do is, uh, you know, as opposed to the Charlie Boy Hopper, we've gotta leave a little extra room. This fly's gonna have a bullet head when it's all said and done. Um, so to allow for that room, what I'm going to do when I pull this binder, or this uh, um, piece under the hook, <coughs> hook to make the, the hole, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it forward a bit, about three millimeters, three, four millimeters, um, which also equates to this space up here. And then I'll poke a hole where that hook eye is going to fit. And I'll go from both sides just so that I don't tear the foam. Then I can slide that foam back out of the way. And I'm going to take just a strip. I would have done this first if I had thought of it, but I just remembered. Um, bring that thread back up. and I'm going to take a strip, just a scrap of foam, two by three, three by three, something like that. And I'm gonna bind that to the shank. And this is really our gluing surface. So uh, what exactly it is, it doesn't really make a difference. The exact dimensions don't make a difference. Um, you can see we're just adding a little more texture and uh, that'll give us a nice surface to glue the, glue the foam to. Um, it occurs to me, at having poked that hole first, that actually made that a lot easier to slide that piece of foam up. Um, typically, I've got to kind of work it up over that second layer of foam. So maybe maybe I just figured out a better way to do this. Um, at any rate, I've got that hole slid in there now. So I'm going to push this back up. I'm going to push the hook eye through that hole. Make sure I've got them big enough. Like so. And then you can see back here at the back, I've got some of that binder strip exposed. I'm going to slide the whole rig back again off the end. My thread should come with it, so my thread is just off the end of that binder strip. And when I fold this, you can see I've got just a little bit of room, 20-25%, 20-20% probably, um, of the hook shank exposed at the front. 
So now I'm going to take some super glue, uh, zapper gap, whatever, uh, whatever kind you like the best, and I'm going to put a bead down, down that binder strip, down both sides, and up onto the extended portion here. And then I'll use a scrap of foam to sort of smear that around. Um, and in all cases with, with glue, uh, less is better. So I take most of it off. I just want a nice, smooth, even layer. Um, this little scrap of foam is uh, left over from the fly I tied previously, and I'll show you where it comes from. Uh, it works perfectly for this job. So I'm going to tilt that back end up a little bit. I'm going to fold the front end forward, and I'm going to fold from front to back. This is the exact same body as a Charlie Boy. Um, and when I get to the back, I'm going to leave that elevation back at the back end. And just kind of square things up there. So we've got the body folded over the hook. Um, and you can see your side is, is pretty uh, pretty open still. Um, my side of the hook is a little tighter closed. Really doesn't make a huge difference. We're going to bind this down with thread. Um, what I'm really concerned with is getting this back end adhered together, which we seem to have a pretty good, pretty good hold on right there. So now I'm going to start at the back here, and I'm going to make one band of thread to create the first segment around the bend here. And I'll go halfway around and tighten it, and then three or four more turns in that same joint. Um, and that's right above the point on the barb. Then I'm going to cross the thread about a third of the way, I'm sorry, a fourth of the way uh, forward, and make another segment. Three or four turns. So you can see that thread crossed on top. I'm going to do it again. And one more time. So I said a fourth, and I was thinking Charlie Boys. This is these are thirds. Um, you can see I've got just a little nub left, and that's going to be where we're going to tie our our uh, our head down. So we won't, don't want much up here. So crosses across the top, smooth and even across the bottom. So now I'm going to take my double edge razor blade, and I'm going to lay this flat on top of the body, and I'm going to push it right back through this foam. Oh, that's a dull one. Let me grab a, a sharp one. I've got one here somewhere, I'm sure. Let's hope this one's a little better. Oh, much better. Slide that right straight through the foam to cut that extended body. And what that does is leaves us with that little stub that we just cut off. And you can see the, the foam is what's at the angle. The cut is just a straight line. Um, so from that point, I've got the back end just still a little bit wider than the rest of the body. So I'll come in with good sharp scissors here, and I'm going to taper this, not to a point, but I am going to taper it a bit, like so. Kind of a wonky cut there, so I'll trim that tip off. And there's our foam hopper body. So that's tan 3mm foam. And of course you can tie these in whatever color you want. All right, now... I'm going to come in, and I'm going to tie in the legs. So for the legs, uh, what I want to do is take three strands of medium round rubber, and I'm going to tie an overhand knot. Um, and for uh, for the left and right legs, you want to do these differently. So I've got one strand here, and you can see I'm taking the uh, the right end of the of the leg. I'm trying to keep this on the screen where you can see it around and over. Um, and when I start to tie the knot, you can see how that's flat all the way through. There's no twist in those three strands. Then I'll kind of start to tease that down. You can kind of twist and, and finagle that knot down and then tighten it down good and tight. And what that'll give you is, I'm going to separate one out and cut the other two off, a leg that kicks out to one side. Um, if I can hold that still, there you go. You can see that kicks out to one side. So that'd be the leg I'd put on this side. Uh, that would be the, the hopper's right leg. Uh, for the, let's see if I've got another strand here handy. Yeah. For the left leg, I want to do the same thing, but in this case, I want to take this left side over the top. So we're basically just tying right and left-handed overhand knots. And I'll pull that down, and again, just kind of finagle that down. I'm making this look harder than it is. You can really sit down and bang these out. But tighten that knot down tight. It's 
separate out that bottom one and cut those top two off. And you can see that one kicks out the other way. Uh, so that'll sit on this side of the fly. So we've got legs that are opposed. I'm trying to get them where you'll be able to see them here and kick out away from each other. Um, so I'm going to take my near side leg. I'm going to measure the knee just back to the bend of the hook here. And I'll lay it in along the side and I'm going to catch the three strands in that first notch. And then I'll cross the thread over the top and catch it again in the second notch. And I, with those three strands, you can see they lay nice and flat in along the side of the foam body. And now I'm going to take my other leg and I'll measure that knee so that it's even with the first. You catch it with a couple turns, and then cross my thread forward again and bind it down one more time. So we've got those nice widespread kicker legs. So now I'm going to trim the ends of that rubber off, and you can save these, these little shorter pieces. Uh, actually, will work nice for the front legs if they're long enough. I'm going to just knock the corners off this foam here at the front, like so. And now we're going to tie in the underwing. Um, so the underwing on this fly is made out of a, uh, a sheet of mottled webwing. Um, and this is mottled tan. Um, and what I've got here is just a strip that, again, is cut about as wide as the gap of the hook. And what I want to do is just come in with my scissors. And I just kind of close the scissors as I rotate the piece to get a rounded end. I hope that showed for you. I was watching it. Uh, so I'm going to take this piece. And I'm going to measure it just past the end of the body. Um, and I don't really want it any longer than, than what it is right there. I'll maybe back it up just a bit. And I want to sort of buckle it around the hook. And I'll take a loose turn over it and then pinch it down so that that wing buckles over the top of the fly. This is a much tougher material than uh, uh, turkey quill or, or uh, you know any type of feather you can use. And you can even kind of crease. You can see I can kind of fold that increase it so it buckles over the top a little better. Um, if you've got any extra up here, you can kind of nick that out as well. Although we've got plenty of time to, to bind that down. All right, now we're going to put in a little bit of flash. And this is just root beer colored crystal flash. And I'm going to take, oh, you know, depends on your mood. I've got maybe five or six strands. And I'm going to tie these in at the middle of their length with a couple turns. I'll fold that front end back and catch that with a couple more turns. Um, and I don't really sweat too much if these are or these are splayed out and kind of crazy right now. We're going to put a wing over the top of this so that's going to clean that up a bit. And now for the overwing we're going to use some some cow elk hair. Um, and I want a nice straight piece of cow elk. I've got just a beautiful piece here. Uh, this is from Nature Spirit. And uh, they still, to this day, have the best stuff going. It's not a little hard to get just because of the supply and demand issues. Um, but this is a, a beautiful straight piece of cow elk. And I'm going to take this clump and I'm going to stack it up, clean it out, and then stack it up in my hair stacker. So that I've got nice even tips. If I've got any broken tips, I always pull those out. And now you can see a little, little more clearly um, that is just a, a beautiful piece of hair. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this just back to the bend of the hook. And I'm, I'm not worried about the length of this crystal flash just yet. I'm going to lay that in. I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to give it just a bit of a spin here. And this will make my thread round so it bites into this thread a little, or it bites into this hair a little bit better. And I'll put two turns on it and then start to cinch down. And you can even pinch from the bottom and pull straight down. And what you've got is that foam uh, underbody or foam body that we were, are tying that, that hair down onto. So that hair wants to pinch into that crease. Uh, it just flares up really nicely right there. And I'll pull all these butt ends up, try to get them all in one shot. And I'll trim those off as close as I can. Gosh, I think I actually got them all. Uh, every now and again, I'll do that and miss one, but today's my day. So um, now at this point with this, this crystal flash, I'll trim this just to random length, still longer than the elk. Uh, but maybe just a little shorter than the than the underwing, than the the webwing. So we've got that nice little tuft on top, um, and we want to make a nice little segment in there, and then we can come down through these butt ends and over that foam, right up to the hook eye. Now what I want to do here is I want to make a, a thread base that 
closes the hook eye, and then a good solid thread base on that bare shank at the front. I want to stop the thread just, oh, half an eye length behind the hook eye. Um, we're going to build a bullet head here, and we want some room to do it. So now for the bullet head, um, this one, I'm going to use some just natural white-tailed deer, and I want to take a pretty good sized clump. And I want to clean it out as, as well as I can. I want to really make sure to get all the short hairs, all the under fur out of it. Um, if you leave any of that in, it's going to, going to fold up in the, in the bullet head and make it look bad. So we don't want that. So I'll put that in my stacker. And I'll give that several good wraps. And that, that clump of hair fills my medium-sized stacker. So it's, it's a pretty good-sized bunch. And then once I take it out of the stacker, I'll clean it again, and I want to make sure that, again, that I got all the short hairs out. I want all these hairs tamped down to the same length. Um, and usually when I do this, I'll have to stack it again because I sort of dishevel it. Still got some short ends in there. So I'll stack it one more time. Um, you know, hair stacking is something I know I always get teased about it in tying demos. Um, a hair stacker is made, oh yeah, like that, to make the hair perfectly even. So that's what I'm shooting for there is perfectly even hair. You can see that nice solid band of black tips, a uh, nice solid uh, tan band right underneath that. Um, that's what I'm shooting for when I stack this hair. Um, now, I see I'm about to run out of time on this camera, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start again, so uh, nothing's going to change. I'm going to keep this right here. We'll come right back. See, I told you, we're right back. Didn't, didn't move a thing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hair out of the stacker and trying to keep it as even as I can, make sure that I don't have any broken tips in there. What I want to do is measure this to about three quarters of a shank long. So from the tips, you can kind of see where I'm lining up with my thumb on the back side here. And I've got the tips facing out over the hook eye. I'm going to hold this hair at that point and trim the butt ends off as straight across as I can. So now I've got the hair pre-cut to length in my fingertips. I'm going to spin this hair just because I was talking and stacking in the meantime. I'm sorry, spin the thread. And with just a short amount of overlap, you can see I'm fairly close to the ends here. I'm going to put one turn, two turns, and start to tighten down. I'll put one more turn on there. So I've just flared that hair in, and it's not very tight. It's going to roll, um, which is all part of our design here. Um, so now I'll kind of hold everything back here, and I'm going to pull the thread toward me and back toward the bend to spin that hair. And you can see it'll roll around the hook. Um, if your elk hair caddis do that, that's bad. But if you're trying to spin hair, that's what you want. Once I get the hair locked in, you can see I'm pulling on it, it won't move anymore. I'm going to work my thread back through those butt ends, just in small increments, much like you do an X caddis. This is just reversed. And I'm going to bring the thread right up to the base of the wing, right back up here. Um, so now what we've got from the front here, let me turn this around, so you can see the hook eyes down there in the middle. So I'll put my finger in here and just start to splay this hair out. I want to try to keep it as straight as I can. You know, the hair's on top, on top, the hair's on the bottom, on the bottom. Um, you see those couple of short ones right there? That's what we were talking about trying to not have. Um, if you see any of those that are obvious, pull them out. And I'll just start to fold this back. Now, everybody thinks you just do this with your fingers, uh, but I'll let you in on a, on a little secret. Um, once you get this even, and I want you to see what I just did there, I just kind of Smooth that hair out so it's radiating 360 degrees. And I've got my thread hanging at the back. I've got a special bullet head tool um, that are available through the shop. They're $16.95. Um, and we handcraft these uh, from uh, ABS plastic and uh, uh, CNC machine uh, to make these perfect little tubes that make this perfect little bullet head. So I'm going to take this specially made, um, I, I, I know it says Bic round stick medium 
USA on it. Um, but and you might think that this was a ballpoint pen body, um, but no, these are these are actually made in our our factory uh, that we've got in the back room where we create all these bullet head tools. Uh, I'm going to take this tool <clears throat> and without twisting it, I'm going to push this hair straight back. You don't want to roll this tool back and forth. I'm going to push this straight back all the way back to where my thread is hanging. And I'd like to even go just a touch further than that to make sure that my thread wraps go in where I think they're going to go, which is going to be right on top of that crease in the foam. So I'm going to hold that in place. I'm going to take one, two, three tight turns, and then I'll tighten that thread down. And I can gauge how, how well I've got that tightened down by how those butt ends flare. Once I've got that tightened down, then I can take this off and hopefully I'm going to say this beforehand. Hopefully this is a nice, clean, tight bullet head. Um, and it's not. Um, I've got a few little creases there. I broke a few little pieces off. You know, this is for you. I'm going to unwind that. I'll show you how to clean that up. Oftentimes, the second time goes a little smoother because we've compressed that hair. Much cleaner. See how that tightened everything up? Now I'm going to say, I'm going to do that one more time, just because I'm picky and I feel like we're friends, so I don't feel like you'll mind. So I'm going to push this back. Um, I, I saw on that last one, there's, there was a few hairs at the bottom that were loose, so I'm going to angle up a little bit just to tighten those up. And you can see what this magic secret tool is doing. It's just sliding those hairs back in a nice 360 degree circle. So one, two. Um, I've already creased that hair, so I'm not really compressing it now. Pull that tube off, and now we're, yeah, about where we want to be. You can see how nice and smooth that bullet head is. So I'm going to make just a little band of thread there to anchor that down, and I'm going to pick up another strand of that medium round rubber leg. I'm going to lay one end along the near side here and catch it with a couple turns. And I'll trim that off. I just cut it in half, and I'll put the other end along the far side. Um, and if you catch some of those hairs on the bottom I just saw in my peripheral, see that one that I caught? Don't worry about that. We're going to cut that off. We're going to trim the bottom side of the fly anyway. Now what I like to do is make sure that the fly is square in the vise and square those legs up. Um, really what I shoot for is even with the middle of the, of the kicker leg, like so. And then I can come in and whip finish right over the top of all this. You can use a, a regular Mattarelli whip finish. Oh, nope, oh, we're not gonna whip finish yet. I forgot a piece. Man, getting old is terrible. All right, one last bit, a uh, little indicator on top. Um, this is a piece of Cerise McFly Lawn. And I'm gonna take this and lay it right on top of that band. Catch it with a couple turns, square it up right on top. I'm gonna trim the front end short. And now I'm going to whip finish right over that band of thread. Pull that down good and tight, and then I can trim my thread out. So I'm going to trim that indicator down just about the same length as the, as the deer hair tips. You can hit that with a dubbing brush if you like to kind of pick that out. It'll, it'll shag out as you fish it, just a short little indicator. Um, and then on the bottom, all this hair that's on the bottom, I want to pull this down and come straight across and trim it off. And I'll usually turn everything and just make sure I've got a nice clean clean bottom so the bottom of the fly is exposed. I'm probably a little pickier about that. You can see that one hair that we didn't like earlier. Getting rid of him. I don't like those two either, and I really don't like this one. So there's our bot, nice and smooth. All right, now we're going to trim the legs. Uh, so the front legs are about, oh, I'm going to say just short of the thigh section. That one's pretty good. And then the back legs, I'm going to trim, and on my Dyna King vise, I always trim these just right here at the corner of the, the forcing cone. So 
we've got those kicker legs that kick out. And then the last thing I'm going to do is color those legs up a bit. Uh, so I take a sepia uh, Prismacolor marker. <clears throat> Got to hold this where you can see it. And I'll take the legs and stretch them out and roll the marker to make some bands on those legs. I'll do that on the on the shin part down here as well. On both sides. Oh, I forgot that other back leg or front leg. Color those up. That's just to add some modeling there. You know, people always ask me if the modeling is, is super necessary. Um, and I'm, I'm not positive that it is, but um, I almost always put it on because it just sets my fly aside from, uh, from everybody else's. You know, my fly's got a little more color to it, a little more variegation. Um, and, you know, on the off chance that I'm fishing behind somebody, or, or these days, you know, the very good chance that I'm fishing behind somebody, um, I'm not throwing the same thing. I've got a fly that's just got a little, a touch little more goodness to it. So I'll use my red marker to just create those little red bands, uh, just little red highlights uh, right on the end of the legs. You can see I just run the marker back and forth, and that was just a standard Sharpie. Um, which we do not make in our factory in the back room. Uh, we only make these <clears throat> these special round stick medium bullet head tools. <sighs> and that is our uh, finished BC hopper. I'm going to take a little bit of gloss coat head cement here and I'll just run this around the that thread band all the way around to lock everything in. But that one came out pretty good. I'm glad I went back at that bullet head and didn't just call that good because you can see um, once you've got it on there, you can sort of mess with it a few times uh, without screwing it up. But nice widespread hopper legs, really good hopper profile, um, big buoyant fly, um, fun fly to fish. And, uh, you know, one of the, the coolest things about this fly, I mean, you know, these days a, a dry dropper rig is, is pretty common. But uh, uh, back then it was it was fairly new, especially dry, dry double dropper. Um, and, and one of the cool things about fishing this fly is, um, you might stand in the run and you sort of convince yourself, you know, very quickly that you're fishing nymphs. You've got your two nymphs dangling below it. Um, usually I'd rig, um, you know, Copper John or uh, two bit hooker, um, you know, three feet below this fly. Um, tie this on a seven and a half foot three X leader, uh, go about three, three or even four feet of four X tippet off the bend to a copper. And then a foot behind that, put a, a bar merger or a jujubeta, so or RS2, something like that. So you very easily convince yourself. Um, that you're fishing with nymphs, and uh, you might make, you know, as you often do with nymphs, you know, a thousand casts through a run, kind of mending and, and you know, plying every seam. Um, and while it seems like you're making the same cast over and over again, on the 219th cast, a fish will come up and grab the hopper, um, which is always just, um, you know, almost scares me when it happens. You know, you're, you're watching the dang hopper like an indicator, um, <clears throat> and then some fish has got the gall. Um, you know, you would think it would be the first cast that they saw it. They'd run up and eat it if that's what they wanted to do. Uh, but very often it's, it's uh, you know, a lot of casts down the line before they grab it. Um, but they, they very often grab it and uh, um, just gives you gives you a chance to cover all three bases. Uh, during the summer, they eat that dry a lot more often than you'd think, too. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's our BC Hopper. Cool little fly. Um, that's a fun one to tie. I haven't tied one in a while. Um, I tied two of them today. I might tie a few more. Um, BC Hopper, John Barr, Charlie Craven. That is our show for today. Um, stay tuned. We've got more coming. Uh, hit like and subscribe for Charlie Slybox. And we've got more videos coming, so we'll we'll get back to work. Thanks, you guys. Take care.